Hi, my name's Anita Thomas. Some of you may know me as one of the read instructors at the Tea Garden Jazz Camps in California. And on behalf of the Jazz Education Foundation, the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation, uh, I'm honored to be presenting a couple of videos about traditional jazz and improvisation on reed instruments, the clarinet and the saxophone in particular. Um, I'd like to start uh, the first video, I'm gonna call it Finding Your Voice. This is one of the most crucial things that we need to do as beginning musicians or beginning jazz musicians. We want to learn how to have a style. And of course, if we're playing in the jazz idiom and we haven't listened to a lot of jazz, then we need to find that voice, that jazz voice in our own playing. We all have different relationships to the music that we play. And so we're all gonna to listen to different music. The music that we play with others will make each person in the group feel a different way. We can never feel the same way as somebody else. So uh, we need to figure out what it is that we like about the music that we play and then try and seek out other musicians from history that play in those styles. And then we should analyze that a little bit and try and put some of their uh, style into our own playing. And that is how we become better jazz musicians. We can get a little deeper into how to take some of that information that we learn from these great musicians and put it into our own playing. But for now, we're gonna talk about listening. So we need to find the people that are important and uh, in, in jazz and decide who it is that we like to play like. There's so many to choose from. I have a long list for you. And of course, there's others that are, the, the list would go on and on. So I just sort of had to stop at a certain point but it's really important to know that if you want to find your voice in jazz, you find your voice by listening to the people that came before you, particularly in traditional jazz. So first of all, you want to find the musicians that actually mean something to you in particular. Those bands that make you feel a certain way, whether the band has a fantastic groove or there's some sweetness in the sound, that makes you want to dance, makes you want to sing, inspires you to pick up your instrument and play along. That's the sort of music that you probably want to listen to a lot because it's going to inspire you to play. So then find the individual musicians in that band and listen to how they play. Is there something about the way they phrase a melody or is there something uh, exciting about the note choices in their improvisations? Or is there a tone that is just rich and beautiful uh, or is there some hard swinging or grooving uh, rhythm in the lines that they play? All these things will help you decide the kind of player that you want to be. We're going back to the 1920s now when jazz was new and it was such a wonderful time for musicians and music. Uh, it was very inventive. Everybody was clamoring to create their sound and their style with this new form of music. It was sort of like the uh, rock and roll or pop music of the day and so there were lots of bands and of course bands had a lot of work there were parades and functions and picnics and funerals and all sorts of uh, events where bands would be needed of course there was no television or movie theaters um, and not everybody I, I don't think the radio was in everybody's home yet people had gramophones they could uh listen to music on gramophones, but not everybody had these things. In fact, the first jazz uh, record made was in 1917, but there had been music records made prior to that. Um, so really this style of music was proliferating everywhere, all over the United States. And it's uh, common knowledge that New Orleans was the birthplace of jazz. So, so many of our great jazz musicians, the people that we aspire to came from New Orleans. I'm sure you've heard of Louis Armstrong. Well, his clarinet player was Johnny Dodds. And I think he's very important to the, the styling of jazz on the clarinet. So please do check out Johnny Dodds. If you wanna know where to look, uh, Louis Armstrong recorded some songs in the late 20s or mid to late 20s. And these bands were Louis Armstrong's Hot Fives and Hot Sevens. And Johnny Dodds, I think is on pretty much all of these recordings. Check out Wild Man Blues or uh, maybe uh, Weary Blues. 
Strutton with some barbecue. Any of these recordings from this time with Johnny Dollars on clarinet are ex excellent. He was a virtuosic clarinet player and had such a great style. And that's one of the people you can go to to learn about this kind of music, this traditional jazz. Of course, he wasn't the only one. There were plenty of musicians playing everywhere. We're fortunate that a lot of recordings were made during this time and we have some of those recordings. And of course, there would have been plenty of people that we never got to hear because they never got recorded. But I'll name some names. Jimmy Noon was a very refined clarinet player and he had the Apex Club Orchestra. And you could check out maybe the Apex Blues that he wrote. Also, um, so Johnny Dodds and Jimmy Noon were both uh, black clarinet players. And I mentioned that because at the time, bands were mostly segregated, um, at least when on recordings. The first recording that was an interracial recording came from the New Orleans Rhythm Kings. There was a white band that had Jelly Roll Morton come and join them. I think that was in 1926. Um, so if you want to check out that recording, Leon Rapolo was on clarinet with the New Orleans Rhythm Kings. He's an excellent clarinet player and is said to have influenced Benny Goodman. Um, also, uh, at the time, Bix Beiderbeck was a cornet player and his clarinetist was Don Murray and he was uh, very technically gifted and uh, played s some wonderful clarinet solos, but also his ensemble clarinet playing is so sort of like a hallmark of some of the stylings of the 1920s. Um, also, we have Buster Bailey, who played with King Oliver as well. He played clarinet and saxophone, and you'll find him on recordings, both on clarinet and not so as often, but on tenor saxophone. You've almost certainly heard of Sidney Bechet. You could check out Egyptian Fantasy, where he's featured on the clarinet, but he also played the soprano saxophone and is perhaps a little more well-known as a soprano saxophone player. Um, and then as we move towards the 30s and the mid 30s into the 40s, we're moving into the swing era. And of course, some of these bands that had uh, a traditional front line that we consider the trumpet, the trombone and the clarinet. Um, some of the clarinet players had played in these bands, for instance, Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, Woody Herman, but they went on to lead larger uh, swing bands, what we would call today swing bands or orchestras that were all arranged and they were featured soloists, but uh, most of them had had this experience in smaller groups where they improvised a lot. Uh, also though, during the, the 30s were bands that did have a traditional front line. So you have Bob Crosby and also Eddie Condon. And so you can find recordings of Bob Crosby who had, who had at times, um, Maddie Matlock on the clarinet and Irving Fazola on the clarinet. Um, I think, uh, trying to think of other clarinet players that he may have had. Uh, you can't go wrong with listening to Barney Bagard. Wow, what an important guy. He played with Louis Armstrong, he played with Duke Ellington, he played with Kid Ori. So you can, uh, there's a beautiful piece called Clarinet Lament that you will find on YouTube uh, featuring him and his he just plays with amazing fluidity all over the clarinet and that was with Duke Ellington. Uh, other people that I haven't mentioned yet are more uh, up-to-date uh, people. Pete Fountain, Peanuts Hucko. Oh, I forgot to mention Pee Wee Russell who played with Eddie Condon. So check out all these clarinet players and find your style and who you like to play like and who makes you want to play the clarinet that way. <laughs> So we're going to move on to saxophone players now. Now I mentioned some clarinet players that also doubled on saxophone and this was not uh, uncommon as you may yourself double on saxophone or you might be a saxophone player doubling on clarinet or other instruments. Um, of course in the early 20s clarinet really was sort of the, the, the instrument of choice in these uh, traditional jazz bands. That, those bands had different names, traditional jazz, hot jazz, um, Dixieland, music, hot music. Uh, so some of the saxophone players that I think you should check out from this early period, I mentioned Buster Bailey before. Um, also, uh, Jimmy Dorsey, wonderful clarinet player, 
wonderful alto saxophone player. And there's some recordings of him playing with a formidable technique. There is a recording, if you look up Jimmy Dorsey and uh, the One O'Clock Jump. Also, he played uh, in a band that a few people, uh, jazz greats played in. He played in a band called the Charleston Chasers. And there's a version of After You've Gone where there's some spectacular uh, alto saxophone playing. In Bix Beiderbecke's band was a C melody sax player called Frankie Trumbauer. If you check out uh, Trumbology, you'll hear some wonderful C melody sax playing. And it said that he influenced Lester Young. And when you listen to Trumbauer and then listen to Lester Young, you might be able to understand that connection there between the two. Lester has a very light way of playing, which also Trumbauer had because of his great speed and facility. Um, also on the C melody sax uh, was Jack Pettis. I believe he played with the New Orleans Rhythm Kings as well. Uh, Eddie Miller was one of the later saxophone players, played with Eddie Condon's band. There's a, and actually Maddie Matlock's band, and there's a, a great recording of him on Hindustan. You might want to check that out. Bud Freeman, uh, again, another technical wizard on the saxophone. If you, probably the best recording to hear of, of him, which is really just a feature of him, is uh, Crazyology. And, um, oh, sorry, what am I saying? Uh, the Eel, the Eel. Actually, he's also on Crazyology. But the eel is still being played today, a very difficult tune, and you will understand why. So check out The Eel by Bud Freeman. There's also a recording of him playing at the jazz band Ball, which sounds uh, incredible also. Uh, and then moving into the late 30s, early 40s, we have players like Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, and Ben Webster. They played, uh, they're most famous for playing with swing bands, but there are small group recordings of them playing also. So I hope these names give you a starting point and you might find other players that really turn you on and inspire you to play jazz and players that you can learn just how to have your own okay, style. So now you've been listening to some clarinet players or saxophone players that really inspire you. And how do you put that in your own playing? Well, this is where we get to the point where we want to imitate how they play. And one of the best ways to do that is to transcribe the notes that the musicians play, but also the style with which they play it. So we need to copy the articulation, we need to copy the dynamic level, whether there's any bends up to the notes, anything about the style of that player, we want to imitate that. So I've chosen Weary Blues with Johnny Dodds. I mentioned he was one of my favorites. And we're gonna to listen to it. What you wanna do is listen to it over and over again. So I'm gonna play it now a couple of times, the intro. <laughs> Okay, we're going to stop there because I'm afraid we're going to run out of time. And of course, you want to listen to these things over and over and over again so that you know what's coming in your head. You can sing the notes almost. If you can sing the notes, you can probably find them on your instrument. So let's go right back to the beginning and see if we can pick out this first little phrase of Johnny Dodds. <laughs> So I hear with the trumpet excuse my singing. So I have to sing da find that note. So already I'm on my way to learning how to be a little bit like Johnny Dodds. Um, so I did spend some time picking this out. It didn't just come straight to me. I have actually listened to this and tried to transcribe it before. But the most important thing is if you can sing it, you can play it on your instrument. So I like these notes that Johnny Dodds plays. It's a nice flourish at the beginning of this song. I really like the second one he plays because it's sort of infused with some blue notes. Let me see if I can get it for you. <laughs> Like that? Uh, we're in the key of our G, F con. 
concert. And some of those notes that he hits are what we call blue notes. And I think maybe you can discover what they are for yourself because they have a certain feeling about them. So hopefully this video will help you find your voice. We've got some more videos coming up to put it all together. And thanks for listening.